I'm Monica Mangan, and I believe that updating your home doesn't have to take a ton of time or money. I show people how to get Pinterest-worthy spaces that are just right for them. This doesn't even look like our house. Are you Whoa. kidding me? <laughs> give me one weekend, I'll give you five projects, and you'll have a completely transformed space by Monday. Guys, I might be crazy because this weekend we are tackling a kitchen in just a weekend. <laughs> the tricky thing with kitchens is that they're a lot of work. Like, sometimes people spend a month on a kitchen renovation. We choose to do it in two days. But I can see the potential it has and I just think it's gonna be awesome if we finish on time. This is the tiny kitchen. Tiniest little kitchen you ever did see, right? <laughs> yes, it is. It's a very small house in general. Yeah, but it's it's in a great neighborhood and it's super, super cute. Hey, I'm Caitlin and I am so excited that Monica is here this weekend to help me redo my tiny kitchen. It's one of the first rooms you see when you walk into my house and it desperately needs help. So there's a lot going on in this tiny kitchen. <laughs> there, there is. <laughs> um, first off, we have this table, which is kind of like the elephant in the room here. <laughs> Definitely an oversized table for this very small space. Yes. We'll figure out something to do there. Right next to the table, we have this lovely baby gate that we call the death trap. <laughs> <laughs> because what's death? Oh. Oh yeah, it's a big drop down it to the basement. It is a serious drop down yeah. to the basement. So I'm a first time home buyer. I saved up all of my money and I poured my heart and soul into this little tiny house. It's only 800 square feet. Unfortunately, my budget wouldn't allow for me to redo the kitchen. When I have my friends over, I'm embarrassed to show them the kitchen. Um, and then I have these gray linoleum floors, okay. kind of dated, yeah. along with my favorite, well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. The teal countertop. Okay. I kind of have this like love-hate relationship with the aqua counters. Oh, like they're kind of cool. No. Not cool at all. Not, huh? uh, they're uh, not cool at all, I'd say. <laughs> all um, right. And the tile, I mean, someone had a specific like style they were going for. Like, check this out. I like, know. It's really, that. it feels like it's like grandma's kitchen in here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's like original cabinetry right underneath it. Yeah. That one set of cabinets looks kind of new. Right. These ones look original, and then this is more like an assemble-it-yourself pantry. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot going on here cabinet-wise. Layout-wise, we can make a few adjustments. Yeah. Style-wise, we can make a ton of adjustments. Good. <laughs> good, good. The first step to everything that we need to do, and we have a lot to do this weekend, is gonna be emptying everything out of here. We need to empty your cabinets, get this massive table out of here, which <laughs> immediately is gonna make this feel so much bigger. Yeah. Um, so let's grab Jay, we'll get a bunch of boxes, and then we'll do some demo. Great, can't Great. wait. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> okay. I want to improve the functionality and style in this kitchen. I feel like there are some small adjustments that we can make that will really help Kate utilize the space better. And as far as style goes, we can totally change that. All right, so we got all the little stuff out of here. All the cabinets are okay. emptied, and now we're gonna do a little bit of demo, as all promised, right. okay? So we're gonna demo some things, and some things we're gonna leave. Like, we don't want to take out the aqua counters because you love them. Oh, <laughs> the counters are out. <laughs> all right, just kidding. Yeah, I will. we're gonna take out the counters. Kind of as we're going, I'll walk you through, like, we're demoing this, we're not demoing that, all, all right? right? Sounds good. Okay, cool. Oh. Well, now we're definitely Great. not keeping it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. My ceremonial piece. I should frame this piece and save it for later. I plan to take down your upper cabinet. All right. But don't worry, I'm gonna give you plenty of storage still. There you go. Get it. So your aqua did not want to leave. It's very sad to go, so we actually need to use a bit of a reciprocating saw to cut it out. Whoa. That's what happens. Big piece. You got it? Yep. Bye-bye, oh, aqua. Bye. <laughs> I was hoping that we might be able to scooch this wall back, but your stove was bumped out because 
There's actually like a chimney back there. I know oh. it's way more than a weekend project. Mm -hmm. So that's like one of the quirky features of this kitchen that we're just gonna have to embrace. <laughs> Let's get the fridge out of here, get the faux wall out, and then we'll get the floor up. Out we go. I feel like where I'm standing is very yeah, unideal. Yeah, you're in a bad spot. This final flooring was laid on top of Luan, which makes it super easy for us to remove. It's coming up in big chunks, which is great because it will definitely save us some valuable time. Watch your step over there. This is wood, and it's probably original, but it's in really, really rough shape. There's holes in it, there's broken yeah. pieces, there's some pieces that look like soft, so we'll do any repairs we need to, but we're not gonna work with this floor. Okay. Now we have to tackle the backsplash. Primarily, we're gonna use the reciprocating saw and just cut the drywall out. All right. Pro tip, a reciprocating saw comes in super handy when removing backsplashes. You can take it out in large sections rather than having to chisel it off piece by piece. Another time saver for us. Are you scared yet? Well, we did tear everything down. We only have a weekend. I would totally understand if you're a little nervous right now because this looks way worse. This looks like I trust you, a Monica. flip you walk into. <laughs> but you and I are gonna go outside and work on a project that actually makes something pretty. Good. Okay, and functional. All right, that Fine. sounds good. And I'm gonna let you finish demoing all the things we talked about. I appreciate that, thank you. Keep demoing. Oh. With, with pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> While Jason finishes making a mess inside, we're outside kicking up some dust with the old circular saw for our next project. All right, so now it's time for you and I to start putting this kitchen back together. All right. And actually, Jason's working on that too. He's gonna start kind of making some tweaks to the cabinets, putting in some new ones, and we're gonna focus on the countertops, okay? Cool. What do you think of these? I love these. I really want a butcher block countertop, so I am so excited about these. I mean, I gotta say, I'm a little sad to let the aqua go, but huh. you're not. So. A good replacement. <laughs> They're the opposite of aqua laminate, for sure. But what we need to do before we can install it is to cut out your sinkhole. Okay, and this is, well, this isn't technically your new sink, but it's the <laughs> template for your new sink. I'm just gonna mark just the corners for now. And then I'm gonna create my shape with tape first. So that way we can draw on the tape and cut through the tape, not the counter. We have a top mount, so it's kind of a drop-in sink. So this line, you're never gonna see it because there's a little lip covering it, but we still want it to be as exact as we can. Cool. Okay, so now we're gonna take our Sharpie marker and trace along the template onto the tape. And that's where we will cut. All right, and there is the shape of your sink. Okay? Great. So now we're going to put our marker away and actually use some power tools. So this is a two inch hole saw and this is like a two inch curve here. Wow. So we're gonna drill out each of our corners. And then once we have holes, we can easily put our jigsaw blade right down in there. Lift a little, hold on. All right. Great, looks good. Good fit, right? Yeah. And when we were out there, you can see Jay put in the base cabinets. So the nice thing is with having this small kitchen, it wasn't like there were that many cabinets to put mm -hmm. in. So we just swapped these ones out with ones that I chose at Lowe's, and then we're gonna put the uppers back up. But first we need to work on attaching our butcher block countertops. So to attach these, we just are gonna use screws and we screw up from underneath. So you'll never see them, but it will hold it securely. And then this piece. Just slides right slides in. Slides right in. That's easy. You remember what this looked like before? This is where you had that kind of like ready to assemble open pantry thing going oh, on. Oh yeah, that's right. So wow. now instead we took the base cabinet all the way over and this gave you, I don't know, maybe like 18 inches of new counter space. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, and no aqua. Yeah, goodbye aqua. <laughs> 
So secret project time. Usually I tackle my secret project on the second day, but this is a two-parter, so we're getting a jump start on it early. Jason's actually already getting his tile on. We are tiling the backsplash, and I picked out this really cool woven tile. I think this has a really natural feel to it, and it's also gonna look fantastic with the butcher block countertops. So we're really lucky that these come in sheets. They're easier to work with, and they're also really a lot more homeowner friendly. So what Jay's doing here, oh my gosh, I love it. You already got two up. Mm-hmm. Do you like it? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna add some more mastic and we'll keep going. Yeah, were you doing dishes? Why are you wearing rubber gloves? Protect the hands. You have like a different kind of glove for every project that we do. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it looks like you were like, ran to your other job washing dishes and then came back to pop in this. Yeah, just so I don't get it under the nails and gooey and stuff like that. Now you need a fresh yeah. mani. <laughs> All right, well, although you're all very distracted by Jay's incredible gloves, I need you to focus on the tile, <laughs> okay? This looks really, really awesome. And this section right here was just two pieces, so it really does go up easily, and we're gonna do it from the window trim down all the way across. You got like 4,000 yeah. trowels we in do here. Have, we do have a few trowels. Quarter. Oh. oh! Glove didn't help you there, bro! <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I want to keep my chicken gloves clean. All right, so I'm going to put it on flat. Then we'll take that quarter by quarter trowel and uh, get our grooves. Get and our that, grooves. Yeah, that way that squish is nice when we put our tile on there. Oh, the there's wall. all the technical terms. Yeah, we get our groove like and it squishes get our, nice. Get our groove on, squish nice. I can't even work with these things on. All right, in this area down here, there are little openings. What we'll do is cut along the back. You're just going to cut the mesh. Okay, and then you have an individual piece that you can pop in. So I'll kind of use one of these as all my little pop-ins and then we only waste one. I'm just using the grout float and it's really helpful. It's a perfect tool for just pressing the tile in. It kind of gets, squishes it all in there to use Jay's terms. Three quarters. So my tile sheets, if I stack two on top of each other, would be about 24 inches. So I need to run out to the saw and make some cuts. I only wanna go up to underneath the window ledge. So it's gonna stop and float right along here. So I'm gonna go start making some cuts so that Jay can go all the way up to the highest point. Cool with that? I like it. Okay. See you tomorrow. Now, normally you would use a wet saw when you're cutting tile and installing it, but this is actually a pretty soft stone, so I'm actually just using a grinder with a diamond wheel on it. It's much easier and a lot less messy. There we go. Then I have a nice clean line along the top. This woven basket weave pattern is a great alternative to subway tile. I love subway tile, but everyone has it these days. So this tile will help your kitchen stand out more if that's what you're going for. All right, different kind of gloves for a different project that I promise is not demo. Good. <laughs> so what we are gonna work on is a flooring project. This is actually gonna be your new flooring. Cool. Okay, this is unfinished flooring. So basically like when you see hardwood floors, yeah. this is what it can look like before it's stained or polyurethane. You're probably wondering why we're not working with your flooring mm -hmm. in there. Part one is that there's huge holes in some of it. That's true. <laughs> we don't wanna fall to our death. Right. And honestly, within a weekend, we just can't work on the floor in there or we can't be in there all weekend. Mm -hmm. So as much as part of me would love to just work with that, right. I still think the best option is going to be to work, stick with the original plan. Got okay? It. We have a ton of different paints and a ton of different stain colors. Okay? Yeah. I kind of want to go for a very eclectic feel with your flooring. So oh. variety of stain colors and even some of the boards we're going to paint and sand down and basically make it look like we scoured all of Philadelphia to find the coolest old wood and put it all together. Great. I can't wait. You like that? Yeah. You ready? Good. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. Color number one. Okay. All right. <laughs> You're making me nervous, Monica. <laughs> so this is like a deep terracotta brick red. All right. Cool. Color number two. Wow. Black. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying nervous. to picture how it all goes together. <laughs> Next color. All right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> looks similar to my counter color. Yes. <laughs> you see where I'm going. 
Wow. Okay, like wow. a deep chocolatey brown. All right. Another navy. A navy. Kind of. All right, and we also have like seven different color stains here. But basically, each piece will be its own color of paint or stain. Cool. Okay. We're going to apply the paint and stain with rags. Our technique here is very random. Some planks will get just paint, some just stain, and some will get both, varying up all the colors. The idea here is to make the planks look distressed, as if the paint and stain is worn down over the years and the wood is like 100 years old and we reclaimed it. So my plan is that we get all of this flooring stained and painted today and then it dries overnight and then we can install it tomorrow dry and it should be quick and easy. Great. Okay, so we have a lot of staining and painting to do. A long <laughs> night. Well, that was a long Saturday, but we're up bright and early today to finish this space up. First, Jason and I are installing the distressed hardwood floor that we painted yesterday. We've got our moisture barrier on top of the subfloor and are installing the planks randomly, different colors and stains, trying not to put too many light colors or shades together in the pattern. The planks are tongue and groove and we're top nailing them into place. I wanted to do it that way to give the floor an older look and feel because that's how they did it in the olden days. Good morning. Hello, how are you? Good. Good, all right, I'm gonna have you help me with something I know you're good at. We're gonna stain some wood, okay? All right. Same kind of process as what we did to the floor yesterday, but all one color, okay? okay? This is for a project that we're gonna do in just a little bit, but we need to get this all stained and then we'll cut the wood and deal with the project. Got it. All right, so there's gloves under there, rag there, you know the routine. All right. So what are we doing? <laughs> All right, so one thing we haven't taken care of yet this weekend is as you call it, the death trap. Oh, yes. So we are working on a project that's going to close off your basement to make it a lot safer, but it's also gonna look really cool. Great. So I picked up the same stain color that your stairs were already stained in. Ah. So it's going to look like it was all meant to be. So you can see I already did a couple coats on these two. So they're a darker, richer. That's one thing that we didn't talk about yesterday is that with stain, you can do multiple coats to achieve a deeper, richer color. All right, so a few of these are already dry enough that we can work with, so we'll start making our cuts and I'll kind of explain a little bit more what we're doing with the project. All right. Okay, a little swaparoo, are you nice All and sturdy? Right. You good? Yeah. Okay, it's tricky doing these renos in the city. <laughs> Not a lot of space. No. All right, so now I can tell you what we are doing with the wood that we just stained. So. I kind of sketched out for you what we're doing. We're gonna use the two by fours and create like a slatted wall cool. underneath, preventing people from falling to their That's death. That's really cool. I'm excited to see that. Now, the reason why we're not doing a solid wall is because you have that beautiful brick behind there. Right. And I don't wanna cover that up much. So we're gonna use the two by fours and leave about four inches between each so that you can still see the brick. And I actually think the combination of like the stained wood and the brick is gonna right. be really pretty. All right, so each piece going down is gonna be a different length, mm -hmm. but to make them all look really uniform, we're going to cut them at a consistent angle going all the way down, and that angle is 42 and a half degrees. The reason we did that is that is the angle, if you were to create a straight line going down your stairs, that's the angle that okay. that's at. How good. Right? <laughs> that was good, a little scary, but I did it. You did it completely, yeah. perfectly fine. That was great. So what I've done is just use some scrap two by fours and cut them to four inch sizes. All right. I call them cheater blocks and they're like my favorite thing when you have to do something over and over and over. So this will keep our spacing even. So I need to put one down at the bottom and then this one will go here and we're going to attach these from the back. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So now you see why we put the piece in yeah. here. So I'm gonna screw through that instead of through your beautiful stairs a million times ah. over. Okay. How's it looking from up there? It looks really great. It's really cool. Do you see now like why I'm keeping the four inch spacing so you can look through the wood and see the brick? Yeah, it looks awesome. Good. 
Oh my gosh, I love it. It looks great. You couldn't really tell, I mean, I could tell it was cool from down there, yeah. but now with the brick, I love it. It looks so nice and you can see straight through, like you were saying, it yeah. looks awesome. But now yeah. look, you could never do this we're before. We're safe now. <laughs> no one will fall. And we made it through that project without me falling down the stairs, <laughs> so that was pretty impressive. All right, well, as much as I love these, Jay and I have a ton to pull together in this kitchen, so you're actually done. You're out of oh, here. You're kicking he me out. He and I are gonna take it for the rest of the day, right. and uh, we'll let you know when we finish. Hopefully Great. it's today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, it will be. <laughs> The count of three, you can open your eyes. One, two, three. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is my kitchen! Oh my gosh! It's gorgeous! Look at the tiles! You like it? Wow, and the floor, I love it! Oh my gosh! I'm speechless, oh Monica! <laughs> I, I can't believe this is my house! I feel like I'm in a dream! <laughs> A good one, I hope. Yeah, oh my gosh, look at all the cabinets. And the refrigerator and the oven. Table, it fits. It fits, and it can also expand, so oh when you have more people, you can just turn it. It's much more flexible for your space. Oh, I can't stop smiling. I love oh, the good. shelves. Did you use the butcher block for Yeah, so it's scrap pieces of butcher block that we had from cutting off the end we used as our shelves. Look at the sink, I love the color. I think it turned out great. And especially, Amazing. like I think there's gonna be a lot more functionality for you now. You have extra cabinetry there all the way around. And then in the corner, we had that Lazy Susan yeah. put in. So there's just so much more storage here. You got like 20 inches of new counter space. This is gorgeous. I could have never imagined it looking like this. <laughs> no? No. The funniest thing is, I'm like not sure if I'm happy or sad about this, but the slatted wall looks like it was always here. It looks great. So I I'm like, wait, it. we did that project, but I keep forgetting about it because it looks like it belongs in here. It looks amazing. It adds so much interest to that side. Mm -hmm. And I love how I can still see the brick right through it. Yeah. It's amazing. I just can't get over the floors. I love them. I'm so glad you I like them. I love them. They were definitely a wild card project and I told I you that. It. And the funniest thing is, is that we kept some aqua in this yeah. kitchen, and but I it's would, in the floor. I would have never thought to put all those bright colors, that aqua, but it really works. It works with the kitchen, it's amazing. It does, I feel like it works really nicely because of the dark staircase, the brick, but then the light pieces that we kept really tie in the butcher block and the backsplash. What do you think about that yeah. backsplash? Love it, and I love how it ties everything together. I it goes great with the butcher block. Yep. Do you feel like you're gonna like have people over now and not be embarrassed of it oh, anymore? Oh, 100%, I feel like this is gonna be my favorite room. I honestly can't remember what it looked like yesterday Me morning. Me either. I can't thank you enough, Monica. Oh, you're so it's welcome. It's like you just, you know, put a magic wand on everything. <laughs> I wish it was that simple. <laughs> <laughs> so there's one person who I know will love the kitchen and I have to go get her. I gotta go get my mom. Well, let me guess, mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can get her. One sec. This lady's been chomping at the bit. Mom and dad have both been very helpful this weekend. They helped us take some trash out. They fed us. So we need a second reveal Keep for them her. Close. When I count to three, you can open them. One, two, three. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. Not your wildest dreams. This is beautiful. Oh my I told you, Monica. I knew she would like it. It's unbelievable. Totally unbelievable. Oh my god, thank you guys. You're gonna so make me oh, cry. It's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. Look Do you at think this. it was her kitchen too? I mean, <laughs> she's gonna be here a lot, I think. Yeah. Right? Oh, oh yeah, oh, she comes goodness. a lot. Oh my goodness. You are so lucky. I know. So lucky. <laughs> oh gosh. I hope you guys like this makeover as much as Kate did. Leave us a comment below, let us know what you think of the makeover, and also be sure to check out our behind the design for this episode. I'll give you all the inside scoop on the makeover and what really went down. Also be sure that you're subscribed to the Lowe's YouTube channel, you wouldn't wanna miss a single episode. See you guys. 
This week I'm helping a super creative family with a craft room makeover and I'm really jazzed up about this because it's the first time I'm getting to tackle this kind of space on the weekender and it's right up my alley. One, two, three. Open your eyes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're good? Dizzy. Yeah. I'm a little dizzy. 